What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to Simplify It, where we're breaking down the ACS piece by piece every single day. You guys already know the deal. I'm Garrett and I'm a flight instructor. And today we're breaking down the equipment requirements for day and night VFR. Now, this is one of my favorite topics to talk about just because A Tomato Flames, this acronym over here, is arguably the most famous acronym in aviation right now. The regulation for today's lesson, 91205. Guys, if there's any regulation to memorize for your check ride to be able to talk about thoroughly, 91205. It's universal, every check ride guaranteed. Now there's not a specific reason for this. I believe it's just because A Tomato Flames and Flaps, the whole regulation covers a lot of different equipment, which can dive into tons of different conversations based on what your DPE may choose to talk about with you. So I didn't want to start the video with the acronym already drawn out because it's just going to fill up the whiteboard and look cluttered. So we're going to go through it together. Now talking about equipment requirements, 91205 is your end all be all. It gives you all the information on your equipment requirements for both day and nighttime flight in VFR conditions. So regardless of what kind of plane you're flying, if you're operating under part 91 rules, you got to have all the equipment listed in this acronym. And if you're flying at night, you gotta have all the equipment listed in that acronym and this acronym. So first one we're gonna talk about is A Tomato Flames. That's your day VFR requirements. All right, and our first A is altimeter. Now these A's go in no particular order. I'm just doing this off the top of my head. So I don't know which one's first in the regulation, but one of the A's is altimeter. I hope you know what an altimeter is if you've made it to this point in the ACS videos so far, but if you don't, the altimeter is the piece of equipment which tells us our altitude. Shown on screen here, there's three different hands, one's for 100s, one's for 1000s, and one's for 10,000s. And the way I've always described it is if the arrow isn't there yet, you haven't gotten there yet. So based on this picture, I don't know which one I'm selecting yet, so I'm going to put the answer on screen, but what do you think the altitude is? Each one's going to look a little bit different, but generally they all follow the same rules, unless you're using a digital one. The altimeters in glass cockpits are laid out a little bit differently, but they're giving you all the same information, which is your MSL altitude, or your altitude above the mean sea level. Next is a T, so we're going to do tachometer. Now, if you don't know what a tachometer is, don't be ashamed, but be ashamed. Now, I'm just kidding guys, but I just say that because there's one in your car and a lot of people just call it their RPMs or their RPM gauge, but that's what your tachometer is. So RPM stands for revolutions per minute or rotations per minute. And all it is is how fast the crankshaft in your engine is spinning per minute. So if your RPM gauge, your tachometer is sitting at the three, you're at 3,000 revolutions per minute. Your crankshaft is spinning around 3,000 times every single minute. We're gonna dive much deeper into engines and systems later on for task G, but for now, I'm just gonna give you guys the basics. Now, another reason your tachometer is important is because it keeps track of your engine's total time. And your engine's total time is important for a multitude of reasons. But for this video, just know that you need a tachometer to fly. Next one is an O, so we're going to do oil pressure gauge. So the engine is the heart of your plane and the fuel system are the veins that carry the blood. The same way that your heart has high or low pressure, your engine also has high or low oil pressure. If you have high oil pressure, there could be a blockage in one of your fuel lines, the same way that your arteries could have a cholesterol blockage. If you have low fuel pressure, that could mean that there's a fuel leak. And I know the comparison's kind of weird, but I do just make the comparison because it makes it really easy to remember. Your engine needs to sustain a normal level of oil pressure, and if it's too high or too low, it's indicative of a problem. And problems related to the engine and flight are obviously extremely serious, so that's why it's a required piece of equipment. Next is an M, so we're gonna go with manifold pressure. Now, I put a star next to this one because you only need a manifold pressure gauge if your plane has a constant speed prop. Most of us getting our private pilot license are doing so in fixed propeller airplanes. 
meaning our propeller's pitch never changes. But there are more advanced aircraft where you can adjust the pitch of your propeller. If you're getting your private pilot license in one of those planes, you're going to need a manifold pressure gauge as well. For most of us, we don't actually need that. We've got another A, so this time we'll do airspeed indicator. Now our airspeed indicator is like your speedometer in the car. It's telling us how fast we're going. Now there are multiple different kinds of airspeeds, but the kind of airspeed that your airspeed indicator is telling you is indicated airspeed. In your flight training, you'll also learn about other airspeeds like calibrated airspeed, true airspeed, ground speed, and we will be covering those in our later videos as well. So if you do want to see those, like and subscribe so that we can keep making these ACS videos and give you guys all the knowledge necessary. All right, next T we've got is our temperature gauge. Now I put another star next to this one as well because again, most of us are getting our private pilot license in single engine propeller plane, which are most often cooled by the air and their oil and usually do not have some sort of liquid cooling system or different cooling system other than just the air. In the case that you're one of the few that's operating a plane that is not an air-cooled aircraft, you're gonna need a temperature gauge in your plane. But for the other 99% of us, we do not need this one either. And that's a good time to bring up the next O, which is oil temperature gauge. Now, as I just said, most of us are in single engine air-cooled planes. And in that case, you gotta have an oil temperature gauge. And similar to oil pressure, a really high oil temp can be indicative that you've got an oil leak. If a bunch of oil leaks out, and all of a sudden your engine is just metal on metal, it's gonna start getting really hot and the leftover oil that there is left is also gonna be really hot. And that tells you that you need to land right now. On the other side of it, say you're in some cold place and you start your plane in the middle of the winter and the engine's running rough for a while while you're taxiing around, you take a look at your oil temperature gauge and it's still really low. It might give you an answer as to why your engine's running rough. Is it really a problem with the engine or has the oil just not warmed up yet? All right, next we got our only F and that's our fuel gauge or fuel gauges. Now it's pretty self-explanatory why you would want a gauge telling you how much fuel you have left when you're in a plane. Running out of fuel on the ground in a car is one thing. Running out of fuel in a plane or a helicopter is obviously in something entirely different. So it's required that you have fuel gauges on your plane for every tank. So if your plane's got two tanks, you need two fuel gauges. Next one we got is our only L and that's our landing gear position indicator. Now, again, the high majority of us are getting our private pilot license in a single engine plane with a fixed landing gear as well but there are a few of us who maybe are getting our license in a uh, Piper Seminole or some sort of multi-engine or complex plane that has an adjustable landing gear. If you do have an adjustable landing gear, you're gonna need a landing gear position indicator to let you know whether your gear is up or down or in transit. But for most of us, our landing gear stays down all the time and therefore we don't need a gauge telling us that. All right, our last A is any collision lights. There's a few different types of lights on the plane and we're gonna get into that with flaps here, but the anti-collision lights are your strobe lights and or your beacon on the tail of your plane. The strobe lights are going to be white flashing lights if your plane even has them. If it's old enough, you don't even need them. And the beacon on your plane's vertical stabilizer is gonna be a red beacon. All right, the next one was the very first instrument to be ever used in aviation ever. Do you think you can guess what it is? Well, if you don't already know, it's your magnetic compass. Back before all the fancy navigation equipment we have today, the first thing they were using was literally a paper map and a compass. All right, next one we got is E, which is our emergency locator transmitter. 
or ELT for short. And we discussed the ELT in our required inspections video. So if you wanna see that, go ahead and check that out. But essentially what your ELT is, is a device that will make a alarm noise on an emergency frequency if you happen to crash or flip the switch in an emergency. All right, and our last letter in A-Tomato Flames is S, which is seat belts. Gotta have seat belts in the plane. There's different rules for shoulder seat belts versus the hip seat belt and when you have to wear them and when your passengers have to wear them. But we're not gonna dive into that in this video. Just know that a required piece of equipment, a tomato flames, is your seat belts. All right, next is our nighttime equipment. So if you wanna fly at night, you're gonna need all of this daytime equipment plus the equipment from the FLAPS acronym. And the first letter we got here is F, which stands for fuses slash circuit breakers. Now, the reason why it's one or the other is because they both serve the same purpose, but circuit breakers are just a little bit more convenient. So in layman's terms, all of the wiring connecting equipment in your plane is essentially connected circuits. If one of those circuits becomes too hot, the job of a fuse or a circuit breaker is to break that circuit, hence the name circuit breaker. So let's say there's some sort of electrical issue with the landing light. The circuit is getting too hot. Your circuit breaker will pop, which breaks the circuit and it can cool down. In the case of a fuse, it will literally burn apart. So the circuit can't complete because the two pieces of metal are no longer connected. If your plane has fuses, you have to take spare fuses with you because once they burn, they can't be reused. But in the case of circuit breakers, you can just push them back in again. Now our next letter is an L, which is our landing light. Now I put another star next to the landing light here because you actually don't need a landing light if the plane is not for hire. Meaning again, if you get your private pilot license and you go out flying at night on your own, you technically don't need a landing light, but I would strongly, strongly advise against that. Even if the airport you're going to at night has lights on the runway, without a landing light, it looks like you're literally landing into an abyss. So I just recommend that you don't go flying at night without a landing light because it's kind of eerie. I've had to do it once before because of a burnt out landing light and I did not see the ground until I was literally five feet over it. I could see the runway lights, but the ground in front of me appeared to be much further away until I was literally right there. So just have a landing light if you can. All right, our next A is any collision lights. Yes, any collision lights are also in A-Tomato Flames. I think they just included it in FLAPS specifically to make the FLAPS acronym work because without the A, it would be FLOOPS. So they added it in. All right, next letter is P, which is gonna be our position lights. Now our position lights, also called our navigation lights, are the green and red lights that we see on the tips of the wings of the plane. This is actually copied from how ships do it. They keep green on the right and red on the left. That's exactly what we do. And that's so that when we're flying at night, if we see a green or red light, just by the color of the light alone, we should be able to determine which direction that plane is going relative to us. And the last letter here, I think everybody would assume, but they say it anyway, which is a source of power. Now, this isn't referring to your engine as a source of power, it's referring to a source of electrical power, which for most of us is gonna be our alternator. And if you drive a gas powered car, your car also has an alternator. Your engine has that belt, which is connected to all those different things. One of them's the alternator and the spinning power of the engine is converted into electricity by the alternator, which can charge your battery and then your battery is able to charge your avionics and other equipment. Alrighty guys, and that's all there is to it for A Tomato Flames and Flaps. Again, try and remember this acronym. Some of these things you don't have to remember. You can just reference the FAR aim for, but this one, I recommend you you remember it, both of them, A Tomato Flames and Flaps. But anyways, guys, if you enjoyed this video or it helped you out, like, subscribe, or comment down below. And let me know where you guys are doing your flight training at. I was saying that in the last video, but just in case you didn't see it, I wanna see who is the furthest away from where I'm at doing flight training. I personally did mine in Arizona and that's where I'm still at. So I wanna see who's the furthest away from that. But if you're in Arizona too, shout out. But anyways, guys, I hope you have a good rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow.